Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to be assembling this, the Devastator Tank mobile platform from DF Robot. And I'm going to be taking this and combining it with a Raspberry Pi Zero W and a motor controller to build the basis of a robot, which I'll then build on top of in future videos. So let's go and have a look inside this rather exciting box. So, here we have a Devastator Tank mobile robot platform from DF Robot. And I should point out there's two versions of this kit, and this is the later version, the upgraded version, which has the metal DC gear motors, as we'll see in a second. But before we open this up and get too engrossed with all the robot parts inside, I thought I'd show you the other things I'll be using in this video. For start, there'll be a Raspberry Pi Zero W, as you can see here. And we'll be having to fit this uh, GPIO header onto that, which probably I'll just do like that and by magic will be soldered on the next time you see it. I might use this little case. I don't quite sure how things are going to go together in this video. I haven't got the robot together yet. What I'm basically doing today is really getting the robot put together and getting it controlled by a Pi so we can just drive it around and basically control it. But all the mountings will be, I'm sure, finished off in, in future videos. We'll also be needing one of these. This is a motor controller. This is an l 298 N. I've used one of these before in the Raspberry Pi Robotics project. And indeed, in this video, I'll be drawing heavily on what I did in my video, Raspberry Pi Robotics number three, keyboard control, what a zappily titled video. All the basic wiring and code will be coming from what I did there. We will, of course, need some wires and things like that, probably some nuts and bolts and screws and that sort of stuff. And uh, by the end of the video, I hope to be controlling the robot using this, which is the Rye i8 keyboard and it works with a little dongle which will plug into a USB uh, connector and plug from the micro USB connector into the Pi. Anyway, let's get back to the uh, robot and I've got Mr. Scissors on hand just in case but probably won't need them here and I think we just flick the front like this and it will come up. I always like the boxes from DF Robot, lovely matte finish and uh, there we are. Oh look, it's got instructions on the top and we can see here it is in fact the uh, metal DC motor version because it's written on the box. And uh, oh, look, it gives us all the instructions of how to put this together. This is a rather nice little leaflet, actually, isn't it? Look at that. You normally get a just an open out thing. This is a proper little book to show you how to put the thing together. I might have to read that. Anyway, we then have um, some boxes. How do we get those out easily? I think I'm going to do this and tip them. There we are. Was that the best way? I don't know. That can go down there in the corner. And these can turn over and like that. There we are, we've now got two boxes. Let's see what's in our, our boxes. Oh, this looks robot-like, doesn't it? Look at that. Oh, I've got to get, get that part out. This is a really tough robot platform. This is uh, all metal and stuff like that. So there we are. Let's just open this part. And uh, wow, this is, that's a tough piece of metal this robot is made out of. And there's more pieces, as we can see here. Let's keep going and get out more parts. Oh, and uh, those are all the parts from uh, this box. So that's, that's obviously the base of the robot. And this is going to be a good build, isn't it? And you can see in here, look at those. These are the um, the, the tyres and the tracks, whatever we call them. The, the wheels, that's the word I was looking for. These are the wheels. We've got little wheel bits and motory bits. They've all got to come out eventually, haven't they? So we might as well get them like that. Look at that. Wow, these are the treads. This is, this is a serious robot, isn't it? Oh dear. Wheels on the floor. Help to get that back in the future. Anyway, now I'm just showing you all the pieces so those can go out a second. And in here, our second box, we have... What's this? Um, oh, it looks like a battery box and, and wires and things. And, uh, oh, metal gear motors. Those are most definitely big metal motors. Wow, those are really heavy. This is clearly solid. And even more parts and even more parts. Oh, lots and lots of nuts and bolts and screws to put it all together. So, uh, as you can see, this is uh, quite a sophisticated, quite a professional kit. So, um, this is obviously not the ideal way to get it all out. So, I'll sort things out and get on with the construction. Right, I've now got all the parts out of their little bags, and as you can see, here they all are. In fact, this isn't even all the parts, because over here we've got all the screws, 
all of my little bags. And as you can see on the back of each package, it's labeled so you know exactly what it is. And there's even spares in every package. So I've checked, I've got lots of all the parts I need. I've got extra parts. And so that's a nice touch, isn't it? This is a, a really quality kit. You look at the parts here and you sort of feel the you know, good qualities we saw earlier, good metal, good, good plastics here. And um, you get the impression this is a kit made by makers for makers. Lots of nice little touches. Things like, for example, down here, we've got some of Velcro adhesive strips so we can attach the battery pack in a way we can sort of take it out and put it back again very easily. All the wiring is supplied, the wiring for the motors, the extra wiring here. We've got a, a charging socket if we want to use it. We've got a switch for the battery pack as well. Nice little touch, a little connector here to connect to the battery pack as well. One of the things I really like are these suspension parts. Again, we've got an extra one here. I was a bit worried I had seven of them. I only need six, but it was a spare. And as you can see, these are beautifully sprung. These will give us the, the proper suspension on, on the wheels that actually take the tracks. And the other thing I really must point out here are these fantastic metal gear motors. Just look at the, the size, the weight of these motors. These are serious motors, even as they're trying to roll away from me. And if I compare that to the motors in my previous Zumo robot, it was a nice little robot, I still play with that robot, but look at the difference in size. These are the Zumo motors, these are the motors in this robot. So this is a really an extraordinarily well-equipped uh, robot. So let's get on to put the thing together. So, the process of putting this thing together is basically the process of building two sides like this and then you put the, the middle in the middle of the sides, if you see what I mean. This takes a little bit of time. You have to take the uh, plastic parts, they initially sort of go together themselves, as you can see here, and then we actually have to put some screws in to hold them together. And you've got to be very careful to get the tensions right with these bolts on the back because this whole thing has to work. This first side took me about an hour to get, get right. The uh, second side here took me about uh, 15 minutes, maybe even 10 minutes, so I got used to the process. And the reason is you've got to make it work. So as you can see, this thing actually flex properly when you finish. You haven't got to get too much tension holding against that, but it's got to be firm on the back. And this one here is even, even wackier look. It goes in two directions, multiple parts flicking around there. So that's one side. When you've got your sides with the suspension system, you don't have to fit a motor onto each side. So the motors come through like that and hopefully line up somewhere with some holes. Oh, there's some holes there, look. And I take a screw. Uh, this is a screw uh, C2. I'm getting into the system here. The instructions here are very good. Um, is this a kit you would give a, a young child? Absolutely not, because either they or their parents would hate you. But uh, provided you take a little bit of time, it's, it's not too difficult to put together. So I'll continue fitting my motor in here. And with the uh, the motor installed and the uh, axle thing on the end. It's now time to start fitting some uh, wheels on here. This one actually has little um, sort of gears on. This is what drives the, the shaft, obviously. If that just drops, drops on there, I think, like, like this. Doesn't that fit on there? I hope so. It goes in somewhere like, like that. That's a good solid fit, but it has a it has a screw as well, just in case that might come out, which obviously is not going to happen, but there's a screw too, so we'll, we'll put that screw in there. And uh, there we are. I think we can be fairly certain that's not going to come off. And it's now time for some of the, uh, the other wheels. This is getting uh, the interesting bit of the build, isn't it? So these, these I think, just drop over like this. Oh, this is, this is cool. This is... Look at this, it's starting to look like a like a thing now, isn't it, as we put these together. Come on, another one, another one up there. And then these, I think, just have some screws in the middle of there. So I'll just drop those in. And uh, there we are. And then just to finish those off, there are some little cappy things that drop in here just to make it look nice and neat, which I think are just some little little push things in there, there they are, those are going in absolutely fine. And then I think that basically this side is now roughly there and it's still, uh, yeah, it's still got its uh, suspension working absolutely fine. So I just need to finish off another one of these sides. And then when I've done that, as you can see, I can just gently tack together just to see how it's going to work the two sides onto the base piece. That's not ideally put together, but it's basically there. If I just flick that over and have a look and this is just to have a have a see how it's going 
and um, yes, it's going pretty well, isn't it? That's what the robot's going to be like. It's always amazing to build something which is uh, larger than the, the box. I know that's not an amazing thing really, but it does make me interested when you can do that. So I need to start thinking now about how the final thing is going to go together with the, the Raspberry Pi and stuff. Obviously the tracks will go on the, on the edges. That's, that's the fun bit at the end. And there is this top piece which fits in like this when you get it appropriately positioned. It goes in somewhere like that and that and that and that. And there we are. That's going to be the, the look of the final thing. But before we get to that, I need to figure out what happens on the inside because I've got to fit in various things. I've got to fit in my battery box, which is going to go, I think, somewhere like here. That's where they expect you to put it. There's actually some mounts here to put a little board in here. I think I'm going to make a plastic board to fit in there and that'll take the uh, the Pi, probably in its little case, somewhere around like that. And then probably the motor control will be somewhere over here. And the reason for that is I need something to power the Pi. I, I borrowed this from my previous robot. That'll go in the back of there because this, this wire's not very flexible. I just need to make it work today. But in theory, that will all fit in something like that. And I'll also uh, fit the switch. Have I got a switch? I'm sure they gave me a switch. There's a switch there as well. So I'm going to now magically make all that fit together and then we might have just about a functional robot. Right, well here we are as you can see everything's all been now fitted and wired up. Since I saw you last have taken a piece of this, piece of uh, plastic card, and I've used that to make myself a little mounting board on which I've mounted the Raspberry Pi Zero W and the motor controller over here. And these are wired up as you can see in this diagram. This is the same wiring configuration I've used in all my previous Raspberry Pi Robotics videos, so it's explained in depth there. But basically you've got four GPIO pins from the Pi connected here through to the uh, motor controller. Two of those pins control one motor, forward or backwards the same for the other motor. As you can see, I've got my bad batteries in here, batteries powering the, the motors and this uh, power bank powering the Pi. This is not a fantastic configuration. Clearly this could be sorted out much better in, in the future. I'm lucky the back of the robot is open. And also the Pi's position is not very good because I've realized I've, I've blocked off access to the camera port and I will want that in the future. So this is not a fantastic configuration, but it'll work for now. In terms of code to make it work, I'm using the code I've used previously, which is basically a piece of code that uses curses to read the keyboard and uses that to control the uh, GPIO pins on the Pi to control the motors. And again, you can see how all that was put together in my Raspberry Pi Robotics number three video. Anyway, for now, this thing is actually powered up. So if I flick the switch, you might see the LED go on on the motor controller. If you notice that, you're doing very well with your vision, so congratulations for your eyes. And if I now take the uh, right keyboard, in theory, Yes, I can, dr can drive the tracks one way, drive the tracks the other way, and I can drive them in different directions to spin. That's really good. That actually works very nicely indeed. Now, you might notice the tracks are a little bit loose. In fact, they're very loose, and that's not that terribly good. These tracks are actually solid tracks, as in they're solid pieces of plastic with pins in, so you can actually take out some of those pins and tighten the tracks up. Apparently that's a fairly common thing you need to do with this robot. I don't think I'll try that today. For now, I'm happy I've just built a functional device. So what I'm going to do is to put the top on. There we are. The thing looks very nice, and I'm really pleased I built a functional robot. I'm really pleased with my Pi Devastator robot build and look forward to adding to the platform in the future. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.